Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, and today we're going to try to fab up a road drag for behind my 20 horsepower John Deere 755 and hopefully put it to the initial test. We're actually up here at Dirt Perfects today. Dirt Perfect owns an excavation company that I work for part-time. If, if you're not watching Dirt Perfect, you should be. I'll put an info card up here, but he's got some road drags we can look at. This one is pretty much made out of nothing but angle iron. You can see that. And this one works perfect. He uses this one on his go-kart track right there. But you can see the way it works. It comes to a point at the front. The material comes down. This is open right here. It comes down and then travels down that way. It basically takes all the high spots, redirects them back here. You can kind of carry material right here and then lays it out nice and even on the road. And it works really well for that intended purpose, but you can tell it's missing a few things, and, and one of those things are scarifiers. Here's just a good old-fashioned box blade. It's got a few scarifiers left. And this is more of a commercial version. It's a Woods. I'm assuming the 72 is probably for the width on this. He bought this to pull behind his John Deere 110 when he used to have a John Deere 110. You can see it does have scarifiers, five of them on there. And it's got two blades, right there and right there. And you can see from the paintwear pattern exactly what the material does on this one. As it goes, it pulls along, the material comes up and over, comes back, goes up and over. It just helps distribute that material evenly across here and then nice and smooth out the back. And the reason it helps smooth it out is this, the distance from the front to the back. It keeps you from getting all bumpy and following the path of the tractor tires. There's a few things I like on this and a few things I don't like. The scar fires is probably my number one complaint on this setup. And I've got an idea of how I want to do the scar fires different on the one we're building. If you look at the box blade, you can see what we're talking about. How that is a shorter distance. That distance from front to back is probably the biggest key on any style of road drag that you're making. Now, technically, if you looked up that woods, I think it would be called a land plane, but that's the biggest difference maker. If you have just a regular grader blade or you have just a regular box blade, any bump or dip that the tire goes in, that blade on the back is gonna duplicate that. If the rear tire hits a dip, that blade's gonna dip. If you have something that carries that distance when that tire dips, this will keep carrying on across and you won't get all those whoop de doos and whoop de don'ts I've got some fresh steel in the back of the old service Subaru, and I've got some scrap steel up at the shop. Let's head up there and see if we can't start getting something put together. If you're new to the channel and I said shop, I don't know what you thought you were going to see, but uh, it's, it's the outside. With an old cable reel, half of it is exposed, the other half has some timber on it for that kind of thing. Anyway, this is what we're working with today, and I'm pretty excited about it. i got the welder out, the extension cords out, the new torches laid out. We're getting ready to go. So let's let's just go. Let's do it. So this is some scrap steel I had laying around. It is very thick for what we're doing. It's definitely overkill. Half inch. But there's a reason I'm doing that, and it all comes down to weight. And we'll talk about that when we put the scar fires on. We are 100% building this thing specifically for my John Deere 755, which is a 20 horsepower tractor. We're not gonna go any wider than we have to because that's just extra material we have to pull for no reason. So 56 inches would make a good working width, but you have to keep in mind, then you have to add on the width of the actual running material on the side that we're talking about. So the 56 inch working width, which is the actual width of the blades doing the work between the two run rails or rub rails, whatever you want to call them, side rails. These are two and a half, so add five inches to that. We're at 61, just for easy math. Let's just call it five foot wide outside to outside, and we'll run with that. I had to pick up some new steel as well. And I just went ahead and had them cut a piece of four inch C channel for me, right at five feet. So we should be able to set this on here. It might be a little over five. We'll double check. That is exactly five feet. Awesome. I know I'm going to want to clip these corners. I think it'd be easier to just go ahead and do that now before we get it welded on there. So let's clip both these corners and we'll use the torch to do that. If you are brand new to the channel, the previous video, I just got my first oxy torch set up. So I'm brand new at torch cutting. 
let's do a little bit more cutting today. And with that being said, there are going to be times when we're building this that a cutoff wheel would probably be easier, but I'm just going to do as much torch work as possible so I can try to practice and get a little bit better at it. This, and this, and this should all be square. I just laid down a little tack on each end just to kind of hold the spacing. Now there's gonna be a piece that goes from about here over to there. So this is a piece of three by three that we need to get in between there somehow. Maybe something like that. Pretty close to it anyway. Doesn't have to be too aggressive at an angle, just enough that it'll roll it along there. Let's do the middle. Like that. Then we got room for the scar fires right up in here. And I gotta figure out how to mark this. Straight edge from bottom to top, and then I can just Well, I mean, let's just transfer over one inch. Let me do the other side and then I'll meet you back on the, let me do the other side and I'll meet you back on the fit up. I think it goes this way I think we'll try it see that one should go in there what did a fella do so here's the really cool thing these are my cut marks you see that right there and you'll notice that I actually cut over here 
Oh, you know, that's pretty neat. I have a plan. I'm not saying it's a great one, but it's better than buying a new piece of steel. Measure once, cut three times. It's not the worst plan I've ever had. I think this is gonna work out okay. I would hope to go inside to inside and then notch it out. This obviously needs to sit a little lower than the running rails on the side so that it's riding on the cutting edge and not necessarily all on the uh, on the running rail. So I was gonna to have to notch it and drop it anyway. It's not gonna look as clean as I'd hoped, but I think we're gonna be able to accomplish the same thing here. Same. Yeah, so we're same there on both sides and that measurement's the same on both sides. I like where it's sitting. Yeah. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay. Where'd that go? By the way, I not only am I learning how to use an oxycetylene torch, but I'm also still trying to figure out this whole welding thing, so bear with me on that if you don't mind. Well, we're definitely hot enough on the amps, so that's handy. Get up there. Yeah. Just like that. I don't see any reason that won't work. I'm going to weld right up the side all the way around the thing. That will work great. The biggest thing I want to make sure is that the, this edge is even as far as hanging down with that edge. Somebody left the daggone roof open. Well, that's okay. While weather conditions are so favorable, we got that on there. It's, um, We'll use some thick paint, huh? But it should hold. I had a pretty big gap on that side, and it looks like I did. I'm going to go ahead and weld this and this and this on and get her solid, and then we'll jump to this part that will attach to the tractor, provided the weather stays nice. That's what we ended up with there. Not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. I mean, I've seen worse. Right there, for example. Okay. Are you guys just gonna sit in the truck, huh? Not even gonna come out and help. I see how it is. Can't say that I blame you.
We're just gonna throw a big old ugly tack on that to hold it. You can see what we're coming up with though. It's looking really good. Things left to do, that same thing on that side. And then a flip up scarifier down the middle, some cleanup work, and then we can test it out. But the kids just got home because it's a snow day and let's be honest, I don't really want to be out here welding this anyway. I'll meet you on hopefully what is a nicer day. It's gonna be Monday because that's my next day off. Hopefully, hopefully the weather cooperates. It's about three days later. Sunshiny, mid 40s today. Gotta love that Indiana weather. This is where I left you at. I'm gonna try to wash this out with the torch and try to cut under the bottom side. That's gonna spring off and pop up, but that's okay. I need to kind of take a little bit off the bottom so I can ratchet strap that tighter down to that piece of metal. We'll do this side next. And once we get this on, we'll get the pins where the three point hooks up installed. Would you look at it? Just look at it, bud. All right, if you guys could just, if you could hold that in for me. Yeah, just, just hold it right, yeah, right there. That's perfect. Thank you. you got you did great it looks great oh, I need longer leads Shoot. this is a bad time to find that out I mean, I can sneak it on the top side somebody asked the other day when I'm gonna finish the table this is it some wood over here to set some stuff on while I'm working. The rest I like it open because I got access. Look, I clamp stuff. I can run lines in and out. And because it's just barely sitting on anything, I can spin stuff around pretty easily. You can't beat the setup. It's just a simple, effective setup. Easy peasy. Now I can reach. These are next. I think I'm just gonna use a torch and cut a hole. We'll try it. As far as where I'm getting my measurements for everything, I just keep coming over to the bush hog and uh, measuring off the bush hog. This is the first time I'll be cutting anything where I'm starting in the center. Normally I start on the edge. Obviously. Guess I'll just use one of the washers. 
center it up and make a mark. Oh, that's a foolproof plan there, bud. It was a good thought. There you go, Neil. Supporting your relation somewhere, huh? Oh yeah. I'm gonna put it so the pinholes are like this. I'm not sure that it matters, just personal preference probably. So the scarifier section is the next part of this project. I want to use this heavier steel so it has a little bit extra weight to try to get them to dig in. I'm going to cut them off right here to get the length we need and we'll just weld it back together and make one piece. Oh, perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'll work though. It'll work. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Mic check. Yeah. Might throw some tacks on that. I'm just going to tack it in a couple places. And then you see if I can't clean it out a little bit. So I got a tap there and there. And one on the back side. So this is what we're starting with. Oh, the daggone winter sun. There we go. This one I had to come in from two different directions. You can see where I met in the middle there. But I think we'll be okay. The next step, let's see, this will be the bottom. So 
So the next step, I went down to our local machine shop and had them cut a bunch of these out. This is AR steel. It's a lot harder than this steel. It shouldn't bend on us. And I did check. The guy said it welds up pretty much the same. We've got 20 of these to go down through here. I got to get my spacing figured out, get a bunch of marks made and a whole bunch of welding and work our way down. Then we got to figure out how to attach the thing. This is what we ended up with. I put them on three inches. Couldn't really get the wire wheel in there to clean them out very good, but let's see what we have. And then I've got a few left over. One here, I think I got one over there yet. So I got some spares. For whenever I absolutely destroy them, here it is, right there. And all I gotta do is call down there and ask them more if I need them. The real question is going to be, are these welds going to hold and if it's going to do what I want it to do. The next step is get this contraption onto this contraption. Catch is, I want this thing to be able to flip up. Obviously, I'm not going to want those down all the time. So I got to come up with a real simple kind of hinge idea. Please don't fall. It's definitely got the weight I want. Oh gosh. It fits. That's good. It definitely fits in there good. Plenty loose. I don't really want it tight from side to side. I have a plan. These are pieces I cut off that weightlifting equipment. Should be a weld up like that. I gotta get all the chrome off of there where I'm gonna weld. Let me get these on there and I'll show you what we got. I put all these daggone teeth on the bottom of it. Makes it hard to. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, right? We just need to put a barrel. Shout for the tires. Yeah. And then I got, uh, I've got these little pieces here that will just slide on and weld up. And that will ride in there, just like a little hinge. I don't see why that won't work. The trick here is gonna be not to blow through this. I wonder if I turn that welder down just a little bit. You know, there's another option here. I got an idea. If I take this old rod and put it in there, that'll give me a little bit of filler, and it'll also give me a little bit of a buffer so I don't blow through the daggone pipe and weld the whole thing together. Come on, baby. Uh, I still got it turned down. I'm trying to weld responsibly. A 
left hand. Here we go. We don't need to look at that. Question is, how good is it on there? Okay. So I've got all that welded on. Everything's free. Everything. I think it's built up enough. I mean, it's one of those things. Time will tell. So now, the last thing we got to do on that is make a way to keep it in the up position. I think the easiest way just be put another piece of pipe on here and run a pin through it. My thought process is for the up position, we'll just put another one here and make a pin. It maybe slides in and out of there. And for the stowed position, we'll put one there. Same thing with a pin that slides in and out. So you can hold it up or you hold it in the working position. So I have one side done and I'll, I'll walk you through the process or thought process here in just a second. I wanna go ahead and see if we can heat and beat these where they need to be, pop a couple holes in it, and at least get this thing behind the tractor so we can see what it looks like behind the tractor. This part's not as quiet. the other side. That's okay. That looks a lot better. Can you see that better? That's pretty good. All right, so here's the rundown. Can you see this handle here? And I'll give you a close up, but uh, it's just to help with the leverage. You unlock it and pull the pin out. Oh, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. And it's stowed away, so you don't need them. If you do need them, you pull the pin. You lock it in place. These are a lever uh, handles off a leg press machine. So I got one for both sides. That's why we're not testing it yet. Cause I'm afraid if I go ahead and try it, it would probably hold. But if I went ahead and try it, I'm afraid I'd end up messing something up. So I wanna wait until I get some more welding rods and some time and we can put the uh, same handle on that side. And here's the close up. You see this little nub right here? I'll clean this up with the grinder and stuff. I'm just practicing with the torch. All my nasty torch cuts, we'll clean up with the grinder in the long run. But uh, that holds it in. There you go. Not bad. You gotta love using some scrap material. I mean, I couldn't have built a handle like that. All I had to do was cut it and it works perfect.
Part two will be coming soon. I hope to finish this later this week, but there's some bad weather coming on my next off day. So I might be working for Dirt Perfect in a shop. It just depends what the weather does. It's either working for Dirt Perfect in the shop, finishing up the hydraulic pump on the 855, or getting this thing finished up and putting it to the test. Like I said, all my nasty torch cuts, I'll come back with the grinder flap. We'll clean it all up. We got a lot of welding left to do. I'll we'll have to flip it over and do some welds on the bottom. I don't know if you know it's on one of the running rails. I already kind of cut and notched it and started bending it up so that on the rails it has, you know, a little angle on each side. So when it's dragging, it's not trying to dig in. I got to finish that yet. There's just a bunch of odds and ends. And then I have some plate steel. I've got an idea. There's two pet peeves I have with road drags. The current scar fire design you get whenever you go to the store and buy one and how much gravel gets out underneath on the sides. You can never keep a good clean edge. So I got an idea for that and we're gonna try it next time. I keep looking at it cause she's gorgeous. I mean, I'm just, I bought a welder a year ago. I bought a torch two weeks ago and I just started learning how to buy steel from a machine shop four weeks ago. You know, we're just learning things and life doesn't get any better when you're learning. I do enjoy it and I hear Chelsea's coming down the road, which means the kids are home from school for the rest of the evening, which means I'm going to go to the house because I like you guys, but you know, choices, right? Uh, stay tuned to part two. I think it's going to be good. I cannot wait to put this thing to the test and see if my welds hold on all those little teeth on the bottom. That should be interesting. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.